This is Larry Lawton, and he's an ex-jewel thief. Not thief, I was a robber. Thief sounds like he went in that person's house and robbed it. I just went with a gun right to their face. Larry's a former career criminal, once considered the biggest jewel thief in the United States. In seven years, I robbed between 15 and 18 million dollars, and then served 12 years in federal prison. And today I'm gonna break down what's right and wrong in some of Hollywood's great movie heists. We're about to watch a lot of crimes in movies, but let me be very clear. I am in no way endorsing or encouraging crime in any way. I'm an ex-criminal, and now I work with police agencies to prevent crime. So I want that to be known right off the bat. <laughs> Let's look at some clips. The bank robbery in heat. Keith, Keith, Keith. Oh, stay down. We want to hurt no one. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money is insured by the federal government. You're not going to lose a dime. When Robert De Niro takes control and tries to calm everybody down by telling them that their money is insured, he's right. It's just like with the robberies that I committed. The people's jewelry was insured, so they got their money. It wasn't the people who you're robbing that were getting robbed. The real people are the insurance companies who are losing the money. And again, I'm not going to say it was right. It's wrong. But... It's not their stuff they're losing. Most of the people I robbed did not hate me because they actually sold their whole store in one shot for insurance. At one time, the feds couldn't get the jewelry store people to say anything bad against me. They got a couple, but the guy who shot me. Okay, now the things that stuck out right away on this clip is, how much do you think that money weighs? Cash is king, you'd like to rob cash, but cash is heavy. They're flinging around that cash like, like it's feathers. That cash is heavy. It's a gram per bill. Each one of those bags is 70 pounds and they're running through the streets like it's a 10 pound bag. You know, it's totally unrealistic. That's part of that struck out of me right away. Cash is heavy. That's why people can rob a lot more in diamonds. You can get a diamond worth $100,000 that is the size of a, a, a penny. You know why cash is king? Because you don't have to deal with a fence. A fence is a middleman. A fence is the guy you take whatever stolen object you have, you get cash from that person for that stolen item, and he then gets rid of it. So you'd have a fence for diamonds. You'd have a fence for VCRs. You can have a fence for clothes. Whatever you steal, you need a fence. Not with cash. Cash is king. Thomas Crown Affair. What you see in here is a mega millionaire stealing a million dollar picture. In a Thomas Crown Affair, what does he do? He robs art. Why does he rob art? Because he knows art. So he knew the value of what he was stealing. This painting is considered to be the first impressionist work in history. It's worth a hundred million bucks. In my own career, I knew about diamonds. Why? Because I went to the GIA Institute under the table to know what I was doing. The GIA Institute is the Gemological Institute of America. They actually show you how to grade diamonds, rate diamonds, actually give them what they call a birth certificate. So understanding what you're robbing is more important than sometimes the robbery itself. Why would I rob something and not know the value of it? Morning, Mr. Crown. I mean, back for your haystacks, huh? In the Thomas Crown Affair, he gets very tight with everybody, and that's very common, because when I did my robberies, I ended up getting tight with the owner or the salesperson in that jewelry store. They didn't know who I was, but they got tight with me. They started talking about the place, and I would end up even sometimes asking to use the bathroom in the back, and they'd say, sure. Now I'd walk in the back and know everything about the store, where the cameras were. What I don't like about what I'm seeing in this clip is he's robbing for fun. He's getting a thrill. I've known people who are very wealthy who want something, but they don't do it themselves. They hire other people to do it. Are you trying to imply that I had something to do with that painting? Trying. No way. Well, would you go, if you were worth $10 million, would you go rob something? If you got 10 million in your house, what are you gonna rob another million for and go to prison? That just doesn't make sense. Thrill, thrill off more. Tommy, that's a hundred thousand dollars on a goddamn golf swing. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, John. I had an opportunity to rob 
millions of dollars in Rembrandts and Picassos, and I couldn't get two cents on the dollar. That means if I robbed a million dollar picture, I couldn't get $20,000. People don't understand, when you rob things, rob something you can get rid of. If I rob right now a truckload of Apple Watches, I can get rid of them tomorrow. If I rob the truckload of Picassos, how am I gonna get rid of them? Can't. I'll take the Apple Watches over to Picasso's any day. It's not worth it. You have to be able to sell it. The only way you can do something like that is find someone who wants something specific. You set a price for it and then steal it. Other than that, stay away. You're better off robbing hubcaps. <laughs> That's the truth. The Italian job. Stealing a safe is not unrealistic. In fact, I knew many people who used to take chains and pull ATM machines right out of banks. Take them with a big heavy truck or even take a bulldozer, rob the bulldozer and literally take a safe right out, throw it in the back of a, a four by four and they're off and gone. So here's what I love about this scene. Great timing, great misdirection. Misdirection is when you send police or uh, people or whoever it is to another area so you have time to do what you're gonna do in your area. In fact, I use misdirection in some of my robberies. I would actually light Molotov cocktails at the end of, other end of a mall or a town and cops and everybody's going towards that and that's misdirection so I know I have more time in the robbery itself. So that's done very well in this movie with the misdirection when the safe goes through the floor. But the guards are either idiots or they're in on it because a 3,000 pound safe going through two floors is not gonna end up in a 21 foot boat flying through a canal. You know, in this clip also it's timing. So timing is everything and knowing when and where people are gonna be and come to the place is important. All right, Charlie, someone just called it in. The police boat's heading your way. Seven minutes and counting, let's go. So how do you do that? It's an easy way to do that. You can light their alarm off. You can start a little fire or something right next to it. Throw a brick through a window with an alarm and see if they'll, how long it takes the police to come there. That's called a false alarm, but you're still gonna get re response time. I used to know how many police cars the place had and how many cops were on. You can call and know the size of the police department and just do the numbers. So now if they have 21 patrol divisions, you probably have three shifts. So at the most, you're gonna have seven cop cars in any given area. So how do you know a cop's not patrolling in that area right then and there and you do it? The cop shows up within 10 seconds, 20 seconds, because he's right there. You better know where the cops are. There's where you go to misdirection. You know, in this movie, right in the beginning, right after the Italian job, they get away and they're out somewhere celebrating and, and one character kills the rest of the people. No, 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 no. Steve, what the hell are you doing? I made a few plans of my own. And in reality, that is more common or would happen with that kind of money. Steve, how many times do I have to tell you? I trust everyone, just don't trust the devil inside them. Great movie, but why don't you just go with these guys in there, knock on the door, get in there somehow. They were in the floor below. They were painting some dynamite on the, on the walls. You can't get into that top floor? Come on, that's a little unrealistic. Listen, I robbed people. I used to rob drug dealers. I used to tie them all up. We'd walk out with a million dollars in cash and the dope. So, I mean, I was a bad guy all around, but I don't do that anymore. Let's take a look at the movie Snatch. So what we're seeing here is four men walking in dressed as Hasidic Jews to rob a wholesaler. I knew a guy who did this. He dressed up as a Hasidic Jew here in Brooklyn and then robbed the, the people who take their diamonds to temple to bless him. Ruby, Ruth, Ruth, let them in, please. These four guys go in through a buzz door. The buzzer doors were good for me, the professional criminal, not for the smash and grab. When I went into a buzz door, I was never surprised after that because I would end up buzzing the person in and taking them down. You don't want someone just walking in and then walking out. In those buzzers, you also have to buzz out. Once you're in there, you're mine. You can't even run out of the store. It buzzes, it locks. There is the stone. They're looking for a specific diamond. And if you notice, it's not in the safe. A lot of times a specific diamond or very high-end stuff might be in a false floorboard 
or a safe that's hidden in a drawer. It does not have to be in the actual safe itself. A lot of times that's the, the jewelry owners trying to not put all their eggs in one basket. So if that safe did get robbed, maybe that higher end stuff doesn't get robbed because a lot of people don't know that. But when you case a store, you'll figure that out. This clip was actually very, very realistic. There's not much wrong except they would have all carried their own gun. I didn't see why they were all four guns on one guy. That made no sense. They're walking in as it is. So if one guy goes off and hits a buzzer, they're gonna pat him down anyway. What I don't like about what I'm seeing in this clip is how they used violence. In all of my robberies, I've never used violence. Didn't need to. In robberies, you don't need to use violence. You need intimidation. And it's wrong. I wanna emphasize that. I didn't hurt anybody in a robbery, but I scared people and that's wrong. So I, I gave, scarred them sometimes for life, which is wrong, but I never had to physically hurt somebody ever in a robbery. Ocean's Eleven. So there's a couple of things this movie does really well. Casing the joint and getting inside information. First task, reconnaissance. I wanna know everything that's going on in all three casinos, from the rotation of the dealers to the path of every cash card. I wanna know everything about every guard, every watcher, anyone with a security pass. Casing the joint is when you take the whole entire theft you're gonna do and get every detail. When you know that the sun comes up and there's glare on the window at a specific time, when you know when the mailman comes by, when the most people are gonna be in the place, what time they open, where they park their cars. When I was casing jewelry stores, I would know what time the sun come up so I'd get the maximum glare so nobody can look in. Casing a joint encompasses total control of the robbery. And you can see in this clip, they're doing exactly that. You can see they have inside information. They have a dealer who knows the ins and outs of that casino and is watching at all times. When you get inside information, you might have to do it a couple of ways. In the clip you're looking at, the girl got money. Thanks, Charmaine. I'll have this back in an hour. But in reality, it would be blackmail, and that's what usually gets people. When you blackmail somebody, it's not just about getting the dirt on them, it's getting dirt that's gonna hurt somebody. And that's what's important, because money will get somebody motivated only so much, but blackmail will keep them quiet forever. In reality, if a reward came out, a person who just did something for X amount of dollars can get more money by telling everybody what really happened. But if the person was blackmailed, you got them forever. And it could be really something as small as gambling or it could be something sexual. But once you have them over blackmail, it's more powerful than money. In the Ocean's Eleven movies, all of them, the Ocean movies, there's just too many people involved. You'd need at least a dozen guys doing a combination of cons. When you have 12 people who directly know about what's going on, there's gonna be a snitch somewhere and they're gonna get the reward also. So even on a mega money, if you have 40, 50 million dollars and you split it up 12 ways and they come up with a $5 million reward, you can get more money by snitching. And the snitches, somebody's gonna snitch somewhere along the line or somebody was in bed with their wife and they told them what's going on and the wife doesn't like him anymore. When I was with Robin, nobody knew who my fence was. And that's important, I did that on purpose. So if anything happened, nobody can get to the next person. Even my own crew didn't know what I was doing as far as where the money was coming from or who, how we were getting rid of the diamonds. And that's important. In this clip here, everybody knows everything and that wouldn't happen in real life. Never. The less people to know, the better. And that's how robbery should go. You know, have I ever thought about robbing casinos? I think I thought about robbing everything. If you did anything in this movie, you'd cut down the amount of people and you might get into the cages. Uh, but if you ever notice any casino where the cages are, they're in the center of the casino, away from any exits. So there's no way you can get into them. Believe me, I looked. Let's take a look at a robbery gone wrong in hell or high water. There's no money in the drawers yet. It's in the safe, and I ain't got the code. Prove it. What you're looking at in this clip is two brothers who rob a bank in a rural town early in the morning. All you're guilty of right now is being stupid. Just leave, and that's all it'll be. Tell me I'm stupid again. The woman is actually giving him uh, some gruff back, and you would see that. People react to robberies in different ways. Uh, some people cry, some people laugh, some people curse you out. Some people stay silent. Uh, you have all different reactions. You see these guys use gloves. I used gloves. Or you can also use crazy glue and literally cover your 
fingertips in crazy glue. And then you don't have any gloves and, they, and you won't get prints out either. Also, they didn't cover their eyes. If you ever notice somebody who really robs something, if they put pantyhose over their head, it disfigures their whole entire face and you could still see but you couldn't describe a person's eyes. If you left your eyes open, a person will look right at your eyes and they'll recognize those eyes again. And it's a quick disguise. Wham, put it right over your head and you're gone and nobody can recognize you, you're done. That's one way to do it. I'll bet we'll get people who do that. Yeah, you guys are gonna go home and find a pair of pantyhose from your mother and you, hey mom, I need a pair of pantyhose. Where do you think you're going? Sit on the floor! You had one guy who was a little out of control, but that's actually what made the robbery work because unpredictability, if a person doesn't know what you're gonna do, they're gonna give you whatever you need to get out of there. And that's the smart way to do it anyway, if you're getting robbed, don't get hurt. There's no money in the drawers yet, it's in the safe and I got the code. They should have cased it. They should have known about the safe and who can get into the safe and at what time you can get into the safe. Also, most safes have time locks. that can only be open at a certain time. And that's very uh, common. Damn it! Y'all are new at this, I'm guessing. Obviously, there's a couple of uh, things banks do, from die packs to GPSs in the money, and they'll give a certain pack of money that has a die pack, and once it leaves the store, it blows, and all that money is done. People in banks are trained to do exactly what they're told and give away the money because it's all insured. Also in banks, if you ever notice, when you go into your next bank, look at the door. There's actually a height marker in every bank right at the door. So when you walk out, you'll see it and, you, and they can tell you how tall you are. Most people who rob banks don't rob one bank. They, they do a lot more. Obviously with the bank, it's the FBI, so you will eventually get caught. I always say the best of the best, the FBI. In the FBI, they got all the money in the world and all the time in the world. You will get caught. The Convenience Store Robbery in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. A great movie, you guys watch that movie? Yeah, it's yeah. a great movie. We've been following a lot of clips with professional criminals, people who plan it out, people who know what they're doing, casing a joint, so to speak. In this clip, you see the exact opposite of a professional. What are you doing? It's safe! Behind the donuts! I'm watching this place. I know what I'm doing. The manager or that store clerk would never have access to a safe. And the safe wouldn't be there uh, oh, right man. behind the hostesses on the counter as well. Uh, it would be a drop safe. All convenience stores, 7-Elevens, uh, Wawa's, they all have what they call a drop safe which has a, a opening on the top that can handle an envelope and cash. And every $100 usually in a cash register, after they have $100, they, they drop that. And you can't get into that drop safe. They'll have a lock that's only open usually by the owner or a manager who comes in later to empty that and check the receipts. That's what they do. He walks in, he sprays paint over the camera like the camera didn't see him already. In today's world, we have cameras that have uh, off-site monitoring and their straight live feeds to another area. Back in the 80s, when this movie was made, they didn't have that. And uh, they would have had a tape machine in the back office. And in the back office, you can actually go in there as a criminal and take the tape out and they wouldn't have any kind of feed of you. You see the manager grab coffee, throw it in the face of the criminal. Obviously he's defending himself and he's allowed to do that, of course. And he uh, is encouraged not to do that though. Most police don't want you to get involved. They want you to give the money away as quick as you can and get rid of him and observe as much as you can because you don't want to get killed. Nobody wants to get hurt. The first action of everybody involved should be safety. And that goes to safety of your customers. If this guy's armed and you did something and he shot you and then Spicoli walked out of the bathroom and then got shot as well, you're talking about a very dangerous situation. It could have been. You also saw the getaway driver take off. Uh, believe it or not, with drug addicts, that'd probably be pretty common. And the one who got caught would be telling on the one who didn't get caught. That would be pretty common too, especially with drug dealers, drug addicts. All right, Hal's The clips you just saw, I don't ever want people to believe that I'm endorsing crime in any way. People don't think criminals should be smarter, but most of them aren't, that's why they go to prison. And in my case, the FBI was very good.